Hello, everybody, and, and welcome to this uh, session on civil engineering and renewable energy one. So, Yushang, if you, if you can, when you're ready. Okay. Yep. One second. Um. So, everybody, please ask questions as we go in the, in the, in the chat. Okay, go for it. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are. Thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Yuxiang Zhang. I am a PhD student in civil engineering at University College Dublin. And today I'll present you a 3D numerical study on the aerodynamic performance of a bridge deck using OpenFORM. Firstly, I'll briefly introduce some background of the project. Then I'll talk about details of the simulations. After that, I'll show you some results and we can have some discussions later. Firstly, background. Uh, in this case study, we're using the Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Bridge in Ireland. It is an extra dose bridge, which is a hybrid of a cable state bridge and a cantilever box girded bridge. It has the longest extra dose concrete span in the world. It is also currently the longest bridge in Ireland. During the design of the bridge, multiple wind tunnel tests were performed. One of those focused on calculating the aerodynamic coefficients of selected bridge deck sections. And what they did was installing a sectional bridge deck model on a rotational plate in the wind tunnel and get a model tested under different angles of attack from minus 10 degrees to plus 10 degrees. The bridge model is made of plywood medium density fiber board and has a scale of 1 over 50. The testing chamber has a length of 20 meters and a 2.2 meter by 2.2 meter cross section. According to the wind tunnel report, uh, the testing velocity is 5.9 meters per second with a turbulence intensity of 15% and a turbulence land scale of 0.68 meters. And the testing chamber has a temperature of around 15 Celsius degree. So based on those uh, background information, what we did is we uh, replicate the wind tunnel test in CFD simulations using OpenFORM. And firstly, let's have a look of the uh, numerical configurations. We're assuming the flow is incompressible, Newtonian, and statically steady, with temperature and gravity effects neglected. So it's governed by the steady-state incompressible form of Rand's formulation. To close the equations, we used three additive viscosity models, the standard K epsilon model, the K omega SST model, and the Spala or Myers model. In this study, all Rand simulations employ the simple algorithm to perform the pressure velocity coupling, and we're using OpenFORM version 7. Simulations presented here are all stage state. And as you can see in the table, gradient and Laplacian terms are disc discretized using Gaussian integration with linear interpolation. Velocity and Newtilda are discretized using the linear upwind scheme. And while well, the rest convective terms are discretized using the upwind scheme. As for linear solvers, we're using PCG with the DIC preconditioner for pressure and stabilized P by CG with DILU for those asymmetric matrices. The Scotch algorithm is used to decompose the mesh into 128 pieces. An average convergence time is around six hours in total with approximately 10,000 iterations on 128 CPU cores. And let's have a look at the geometries. And the bridge deck geometries is sketched using an open source software called FreeCAD. It has the same dimension of the model used in the wind tunnel test. The deck was firstly sketched in 2D and then extruded to 3D. And then you can see the secondary structures are sketched as separate parts. You can see hand drills, uh, central barriers, and fascia beams. Finally, all parts are combined together, and we got a SDL files. Like the wind tunnel test, there are 21 configurations in the CFD simulations, each of which simulates the bridge deck with a different angle of attack, ranging from minus 10 degrees to plus 10 degrees with an increment of 1 degree. Dimensions of the domain are shown in the figure, which are the same as that of the wind tunnel testing chamber, as mentioned in the background information. The yellow face on the left is the inlet and the right face on the right is the outlet. And the other four faces are defined as no slip walls. And the bridge geometry is placed in the center of the domain, the surface of which is also considered as a no slip wall. To determine the effect of domain sizes on the numerical results, a domain sensitivity study is conducted. Four different domain sizes are considered, each of which has the same cross-section but has a different lens. The full domain has a lens of 20 meters to replicate the wind tunnel testing chamber, and the half domain, quarter domain, and the one-eighth domain has a lens of 10 meters 
5 meters and 2.5 meters respectively. Next, boundary conditions. A summary of boundary conditions applied in simulations using the k-omega SST turbulence model is shown in the table. And we're using fixed value of velocity, turbulence kinematic energy, and the energy dissipation rate at inlet. A uniform inlet velocity of 5.9 meters per second was used, which is as described in the uh, wind tunnel report. K and omega are both initialized using the list of two equations. Wall functions are applied for wall patches of the domain. But K is configured with a fixed value of zero at the bridge surface as the mesh is fine enough to resolve the viscous sublayer. Simulations that apply the K-epsilon model and the Spalar or Myers model have the identical boundary conditions of U and P as in the last slide. And this table simply shows boundary conditions of K, epsilon, and nu tilde in simulations using the K-epsilon model and the Spalar or Myers model. And also, epsilon and nu tilde are initialized uh, using the listed equations. That's everything on boundary conditions. Now the mesh scheme. Firstly, let's have a look of a cross-section of the final mesh. And a closer view. And uh, this one's just uh, details. So basically, we're using snappy hex mesh. And here's the scheme for the background mesh. Cells within the background mesh are cubes with, uh, that have a width of 50 millimeters. And there are six levels of refinement within the mesh. Five of layers were added between adjacent levels. Boundary layers contains eight layers of cells that have uh, overall thickness of 0.5 millimeters. The maximum and average Y plus values at the bridge surface are 1.3 and 0 0.35. The total mesh contains approximately 35 million cells but that, uh, that might vary on different configurations of the geometries. Now let's see some results. Uh, firstly, some colorful figures. And this is a velocity plot on a cross-section of the full domain. And a closer view. And this one uses the uh, line integral convolution representation to illustrate air circulations around the bridge deck sections. And this is the closer view of the upper windward side. And now the upper leeward. And this is the uh, lower windward. And this is the uh, lower leeward. And finally, this is the area around the uh, central barrier. Now a little bit calculations. In prior wind tunnel test, quasi steady aerodynamic coefficients were used to evaluate the bridge deck. And similarly, post-processing of the simulations also centers on calculating these coefficients. As you can see in the equations, fx, fz, and my within are all extracted using the force function in open form, which is pretty handy. Now let's look at the results of the domain sensitivity study as mentioned. Firstly, the length of the domain has an almost negligible effect on cases with small angles of attack. But the length of domain has moderate effect on cases with large angles. As for drag coefficients, when the angle increases from 0 degrees to uh, minus 10 degrees, the difference among different uh, domain lenses is kind of amplified. And for lift coefficients, such difference is almost constant among different domain lenses. And finally, for moment coefficients, as you can see, cases with an angle from minus 10 degrees to plus three degrees are almost independent from the domain lens, while well, results of remaining configurations of uh, moment coefficients show a strong dependence on the domain lens. Based on these results, we would say it is probably not a good idea to save on computational power by using shortened the domain and to replicate wind tunnel tests in numerical simulations using a domain that is similar to the wind tunnel testing chamber will probably deliver uh, closer results to the experimental results. Now the comparison of their turbulence models. Firstly, to eliminate the effect of domain lens on results, the full lens domain was utilized. And looking at these figures, you probably find that there are relatively large discrepancies in the comparison of drag coefficients and moment coefficients determined from wind tunnel tests and simulations. This could be the results of the application of side plates in wind tunnel tests. Uh, we did not include the side plate geometries in the presented simulations but an ongoing study is performed to evaluate the side plate effects. 
Another finding is that aerodynamic coefficients derived from simulations based on the standard k-epsilon model uh, show an almost linear correlation with the angle of tech. Such correlations are not seen in other three sets of data. And that's pretty much everything of my presentation. Here is the reference. And in the end, we would like to thank iCheck, TII, UCD, and CSC. And please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. That's great. Thanks very much, Yusheng, for a very nice uh, talk. So we have a few questions in the chat. Uh, the first one uh, from Chandan Bose. Actually, Chandan, I accidentally deleted your first question by accident. Uh, so I think your first question was, uh, and you may like to type this in again, but it was related to turbulence. You have two questions related to turbulence. One was, what was the turbulent intensity uh, used? And the separate one, what was the resulting range of Y plus values? Okay. Um, well, firstly, uh, the turbulence intensity. Uh, in this study, we're using 15% of turbulence intensity with a turbulence length scale of 0 .0, uh, 0.68 meters. And that's for the turbulence. As for the second part of the question, what is it again? Sorry. Uh, what, what was the range of Y plus values? Okay, the range of Y plus values. Uh, firstly, around the bridge, uh, bridge geometry surface, uh, at the uh, f when the free stream velocity is set to be 5.9 meters per second, the y plus value average y plus value is almost uh, under one. So basically, the average y plus value is uh, 1.35, and we have something around. Oh no, the average is actually 0.35, and the maximum is actually 1.35, and that's for the y plus value. Great. Uh, I have another question from Benjamin Tan. Um, hi, may I know what are the boundary conditions used for the side walls of your domain? Is it slip or no slip, etc.? Okay, for our cases, we're using the no slip condition for the boundaries of the domain. Good, very good. Uh, I have another one from, let me see, from Chandon. Um, do you plan to compare the results with a transition model like K Omega LM? Well, uh, that's a very good question. Actually, we, we have tried uh, a lot of uh, different turbulence models and we, we only uh, showed you some most representative results here. Yeah, we, we, do, uh, we do plan to use more transitional uh, models. And we also, we actually compared uh, some Reynolds number, uh, Reynolds stress uh, uh, models, but we didn't show it here. Uh, hopefully in the future, we'll combine all together and present something in the future. Right. And then from Chagri Metin, did you get average value of coefficient for each angle of attack? If so, how many iterations did you get for the average? Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, firstly, the coefficients, uh, the, the coefficients we derived from force, and that's, so basically we're using uh, simple algorithms. So each iteration, each simple iterations, we derive a force and we calculate them. And I think for the average, yes, we, we do. We're, we, we're, we were using the average uh, uh, co uh, average coefficients, and I think for our cases is uh, in the last hundred iterations, the uh, forces basically remain stable, and the changes of around maybe time to the minus six. So okay. the okay. variation is very small. Okay. Great. Uh, we've one other question from Petros, but uh, we're out of time now. So, uh, Yusheng, maybe you can uh, answer the, the the final question in the chat. Yes. Just look in the chat. So that's great. You can stop sharing your screen now. Thanks very much again, Yusheng.